Fox Studios took a lot of liberties with the X-Men franchise, including their portrayal of the big one. He's bad, but he's also good. He's complicated. He's Max Eisenhard. Or is he Eric Lenscher? He's definitely Magneto. So let's compare the comics version to the movies. And if you like the video, just click the like button. And if you really like the video, click subscribe. Magneto is one of the most iconic characters in the Marvel Comics universe. He's been around since the 1960s in the first ever X-Men comic, only 12 cents. And he's been up to all sorts of shenanigans. So Magneto, aka Max Eisenhardt, started off as a Holocaust survivor who developed his mutant powers that allowed him to control magnetic fields when his family were killed in a brutal way. He had a rough go of it early on, but he eventually found his way to the United States where he got involved with the X-Men. Now Magneto's relationship with the X-Men is complicated. On the one hand, he's a mutant just like them, and he's got a pretty good point about the way humans mistreat mutants, but on the other hand, he's a total megalomaniac who wants to take over the world and subjugate humanity, which isn't exactly in line with the X-Men's values. Over the years, Magneto's gone through a lot of changes. He started as a full-on villain back when the comics were simple bent on world domination and mutant supremacy with his brotherhood of evil mutants. No ambiguity with that name. Other times, he's been more of an anti-hero, trying to protect mutants from persecution and oppression. But no matter what, he's always been an absolute beast. And in amongst it all, he's created Genosha, only for that to be wiped out, as mentioned with Emma Frost. He's had some kids, one of whom wiped out 90% of mutants in a flash, plus plenty of other stuff. In recent years, Magneto's mellowed out a bit. He's still got his strong beliefs about mutant rights, but he's not quite as gung-ho about violence and domination as he used to be. Of course, he's still a formidable opponent, and he's not above a little bit of mischief from time to time, and we won't go into the recent stuff as well, because spoilers. So let's get to those bloody powers. He was recently classed as an Omega-level mutant, and consistently referred to as one of the most powerful around. So he's got the powers of magnetism, and everything that includes. So it's not just getting big bits of metal and chucking them around. Yeah, he can do that. He does it all the time. He loves doing it. But it's also things like controlling the iron in people's blood to fling them around or just explode them. If you've got a skeleton covered in metal, it'll snatch that out of you too. It's also creating global EMPs, knocking everything out around the world. He can take down the Avengers all in one go. He can protect people from nuclear explosions with his force fields. In the Ultimate Universe, he even shifted the magnetic poles of the Earth, causing some carnage. One of the most insane things I've seen him do was off the back of one of my favourite runs in the X-Men featuring the break world. It ends with Kitty Pride phased into a giant hollow bullet travelling across space. She's a goner. But Magneto spends days searching for it across the universe and manages to pull it back and get Kitty out. Mental! So yes, I think he's pretty badass. And so the movies have simplified him a lot. The early movies had Sir Ian McKellen as an older Magneto, which was kind of fine. He is always depicted as being a bit older, having grown up in the 40s, and his powers are pretty basic. It's literally like he can just control metal rather than magnetism in general. So there's some nice displays of power, but a bit meh compared to the comics. I do like when he stops that bullet and pushes it into the dude's head. Me in 2000 found that very affecting. Of course, X-Men 2 showed how devastating he can be with just excess iron in the blood escaping from prison in that excellent scene. And then he's casually crushing people in cars in X-Men 3, and obviously plays around with the Golden Gate Bridge like it was nothing. Now Fassbender I bloody love, ever since he was the skinny ripped dude in 300 and getting his dick out in shame. His Magneto is proper badass, moving some serious metal in the movies. I've mentioned it before that I love the Nazi hunter aspect to him in first class, that scene in the bar, so good. <laughs> And because it's the fast, you get a real sense that there's some darkness to him. And he shows some proper power. He does the standard fling in a metal, and he's got a great fight scene in Dark Phoenix, taking down some aliens in some very cool ways before again casually just crushing the train cars. And in Days of Future Past, he shows some frankly ridiculous skill putting metal into the Sentinels, which somehow lets him control them with words. Do what you were made for. Never mind, it's a cool idea. He also gets an upgrade from Apocalypse and starts changing the magnetic poles of the Earth, causing some havoc and a nice nod to the comics. So yeah, these just go to show that even the super powerful characters in the movies have still been nerfed a little bit compared to the comics. Understandably so, I want to make that clear. Okay, thank you very much.